Hi, the quadratic journey continues. This is an introduction to sketching graphs. You've already done some of this. Uh-oh, we have a problem. Oh no, the batteries on the calculator are flat. How can we draw a graph without the calculator? Well, we've done a few, haven't we? Ones like this. Things like, what about y equals x plus 1 squared and plus 4? Could you do that? I think it looks like this one over here. Can you see it's been moved negative 1, opposite sign of that, and plus 4 in the x and y. And it goes to there. But what have they done to the function? How would you work out that it was up there if it wasn't in this form? If it was all expanded? Do you remember your expansions? Come over here and let's have a look. That form is easy to handle, but if you foil it or use a perfect square expansion, first one squared plus twice the product plus second one squared, you get a different looking function. Hey, you're a mathematician. If your batteries are flat, you don't care. Let's do some maths. So, hey, given that form, how would you find the vertex? How would you get it into this form so that you could work out the vertex? Hmm, over here, come right over here for this one. This one's not so bad. That's what we've been doing. We're doing these transformations. Dilation of 3 just makes it steeper. Neg 3, negative is a reflection in the x-axis, and then 3 is that dilation or stretch again. That's not too bad. But what about this? How would you find more detailed points here? More detail about the graph, rather. These points. Okay, I think... We worked on the vertex quite a bit, moving it around, translations, but how would we get the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts when the batteries are flat? Wow. Okay, the aim of this presentation is to give you some ideas about what we want to try and do in the following parts. Okay, so come down and let's have a look at what we know about the function and some of the terminology around it. A quadratic equation with positive coefficient of x squared. Let's just see what we're talking about. In other words, the number in front of x squared is positive. We know that therefore it looks like this. A positive parabola, we don't usually say that. We say uh, convex, meaning there's outside um, regions like this, around it if you like, or concave up, the cave in the function is on the top and then of course if there's a negative x squared that means it's been reflected in the x-axis at some stage and this is called concave or concave down why well here you are i got you in a little cave there mate there's your little cave okay that, that's an easy way of remembering this terminology so what we want to investigate is up the top here when we get an expanded form like that can we say things about it? And can we still find the vertex? Well, what about the other property I was talking about, where it cuts the y-axis? Can you find that? We can say, well, x is naught in the equation, and therefore that would give us a y-value maybe. Do you believe that along the y-axis x is naught? Let's investigate that. Here's a set of axes here. And we start measurement from this point, so we go positively for x there, negatively there. So right in the middle, yeah, x is zero on the y-axis. So we're going to do that. This is just a summary now of the th sort of things that we want to do when the batteries are flat. Okay, the x-intercepts now crosses the x-axis. Now, sometimes, of course, it won't. Look at this dude over here. The whole thing, because it's convex, is above the axis, still got a y-intercept, but never comes down to the x-axis. Do you want another dude over here, a concave one, that might not cut the y-axis, say, hey, like that? Uh, cut the x-axis, sorry. And sometimes they might just touch the x-axis. We've drawn some of those. What would that look like? y equals, look, it moves across to about 3. x takes 3 squared, eh? Just an x-translation. Hasn't moved in the y-direction, so just touching the axis. 
What about this one? Two x-intercepts. So there's lots to find, particularly when your batteries are flat, you don't know what it looks like. Okay, x-intercepts are found by equating the quadratic to zero and solving. Okay, if you can, there may be no intercepts. If there is one solution, the parabola, remember that's the shape of the graph, touches the x-axis, there's only one x-intercept. Two solutions, there are two distinct intercepts. So what we're going to have to handle is taking the function in expanded form perhaps and finding when it's naught. How would you do that? That's excitement for the future. Uh, down here, the turning point. Well, we know the turning point. If you're lucky enough to put it in that form, and did the one up the top there, y equals x plus 1 squared, Oop, all squared, and I just tidy that up there, x plus 1 all squared plus 4, it's moved across the vertex is at neg 1, 4 now, opposite tra x translation to that sign there, neg 1, 4, that's great, but if it's all expanded, how do you get it back? And we did expand that. And what did we get? We had x squared plus 2x plus 5. What if they give it to you in that form? Can you put it back in that nice package to see those translations? Okay. Let's have a look at a graph that's got 2x intercepts. And what could you do? Well, you could actually find the x value of that vertex, couldn't you? Because we're starting to learn now that the parabola has symmetry about the vertex. It's symmetry. It's got symmetry. It's symmetrical. So this is halfway between the two x's. So if this was 1 and this was 5, the axis of symmetry would be halfway between. Halfway between two numbers is their mean. So it's 1 plus 5 on 2, which is x equals 3, would be the line of symmetry. So there's some tricky-dicky things that you can do if your batteries are flat. Aha! OK, and then could we get the y value to go with this so that we could find the actual coordinates up here of that vertex? Well, you could substitute it, substitute into the y equals expression because remember an equation is a rule that the x and y's must obey to be on the shape so once you know its x value you can put it back in the original formula to find its y value now that's a tricky one when a graph has only one x intercept the turning point is the x intercept there it is there that's the turning point. That's also the axis of symmetry. Could we do this one? Let's say this is at x equals neg 4, and it's just touching. Well, you know from your translation work, that means it's x plus 4 squared, doesn't it? The vertex here has been moved across to neg 4, neg 4 translation in the x direction. And that means the formula would be x plus 4 squared no added number on the end here because there's no movement up the um, y direction okay now that's an awful lot to take on board but i guess really you were starting to think about that anyway when you're drawing these graphs how to nail it a bit better than just doing rough sketches when your batteries are flat okay let's come down and look at some of those questions here we are um, the general form of the quadratic function, when it's all expanded, is like that. Any term squared plus, uh, well, x term squared um, plus a single x term plus constant. Okay, so anything like that is going to give a, para a parabolic shape one way up or the other. Remember, the concave, and this is convex. Okay, now, finding the x-intercept. Here's a list of things we're going to try and do in following presentations. All along the x-axis, y is naught. So we're going to put the equation equal to zero to find where graphs cut the x-axis, like these points or these points. Okay, 
So that's going to nail it. That's going to make a better graph when the batteries are flat. Okay, so we need to solve that equation. That's going to be one of the things that we're going to try to do. So let's have a look at what issues that raises. Burning question is, how can you solve an equation like that? Right, burning question in red, mate. Don't forget that one. So you're going to put these all sorts of these different equations equal to naught and see where they cut the x-axis. That's going to be in the next presentation. Let's look at some of the other things we want to do. Remember the purpose of this. We're going to nail this uh, quadratic function, this parabola type shape, because it's so important in practice, in the real world. Remember back to the original presentation. Okay, come on down. Finding the vertex. Okay, we can do it quite easily when it's in that form, because we've established that this gives us a plus h um, horizontal or translation in the x direction it moves along the x axis opposite sign to that and this is a plus k y translation or vertical translation and we know that this is a heap big value function here in this form but the burning question is if we go back to the one we started with this dude here how would you know its vertex? How can you package it backwards into this form? How can you do that? Okay, that's exciting. It's actually a lifesaver if your batteries are flat. Okay, so let's go down. What's an example? Y equals X squared plus 2X take 3. Wow. Okay, so that's our journey now. We want to actually handle all those and see if we can nail this function okay if we took this one here y equals x squared plus 2x take 3 we want to know exactly where its vertex is it doesn't do something like this do we know anything about it right at the moment oh yeah positive x squared means it's convex or concave up the cave is in there if you like so we know that I don't know. Do you want to do something else? Why don't we put x is naught in there? Naught squared plus 2 times naught is naught. Neg 3. So when x is naught, it's down at neg 3. Hey, we've got a bit. So we know this is wrong. We know this is wrong for a start. This is exciting, isn't it? Being able to actually work something out for yourself. Maybe it's like that, is it? Okay, so what are we going to have to try and nail? These values here. Hey, we are okay. We're going to be okay, even when our batteries are flat. I hope you're excited about doing some maths. Anyway, that's all for now. What I want to do is uh, to uh, build on this later on. So uh, it's cheers for now. I'll catch you in the next presentation.